So let's get to, to the bottom of this tragic Penn State sex scandal. Joe Paterno and two of his bosses knew of at least one incident of rape on their campus by a former longtime assistant coach, Jerry Sandusky. A grad assistant reported to Coach Paterno. Joe Pa then reported to his athletic director and vice president. Then these two superiors, these two bosses, reported to Sandusky's shady charity and only to his charity and proceed to take away his access to some of these athletic facilities. And at no point do any of these four report this incident to the police or to any child protection, child protection agency. And Sandusky gets off the hook, free to continue uh, whatever it is that he is accused of doing, which is, of course, the alleged raping of several young boys, even though it's apparent that all, all these four people involved suspected that this was anything but. So who's at fault here? Well, everyone, everyone certainly deserves a share of the blame. Certainly, Paterno's bosses are at fault for covering up the incident as is the grad assistant who accepted a promotion in exchange for his silence. But the biggest share of the blame lies with Joe Paterno himself, the legendary Hall of Fame coaching icon, the face of the Penn State football team, the face of Penn State University, and even the face of an entire community. This so-called leader of men, this man who would not compromise his values, failed to lead by example when it mattered most. He may have done what was legally required of him to do, but he did not do what was morally required of him. And let's face facts, if, if he was just one step higher up the hierarchy, if he was the athletic director or the school or a school executive, Paterno himself would also face perjury charges right now. So when faced with this decision, whether to turn in his longtime friend and colleague to sacrifice a, a part of his coaching legacy for the better good of his community. Joe Paterno instead decided to value his own ego and protect his own material image. And you can see it in his reaction to the hundreds of these fans, these sycophant fans standing outside his home chanting his name. Joe Pa himself soaking up this, this blind adulation asking them to say a prayer for the victims, but not before ending his speech by chanting, We are Penn State! He talks about being fooled, fooled, by these charges against his friend, if these charges indeed were true, when he himself had the chance to find out nine years ago and failed to act. He, and finally now, he announces his retirement today. But only after he, after the regular season, mind you, He'll be allowing himself to coach his top 25 team one more time for just a few more games before he has to step down for good. So while an entire community and its victims are suffering right now and others are facing possible jail time for covering up a crime, this man gets a chance to bask in the glory of his chosen profession one more time. It is an insult to common sense and human decency, a huge slap in the face to everyone the victims, the parents, the college, to Happy Valley, to an entire state of Pennsylvania, and to an entire college football community. People are hurting, but this man, even with an already tarnished legacy, will be allowed the chance to walk away with his head held high. Penn State should do the right thing and force him out immediately. Don't let this man's face be shown on TV as a head coach or even as a football personality ever again. He should be forced to walk away and hide unless he is willing to make up for the shame that he brought upon his entire community. Otherwise, Penn State is no better than this guy is. Joe Paterno, in my honest opinion, is a disgrace.